Well, hello, friends, and welcome to another Ask Zach. I hope you're doing well today. Uh, today, we are going to talk about tel my method of Telecaster setup, or if you want to be more au courant, you could say uh, Zach's Telecaster setup hacks. So, anywho, just having a little fun there. Uh, first off, a little uh, correction or addition to uh, the last episode on uh, a country electric rhythm guitar. I talked about Albert Lee playing on Rodney Crowell's tune, Stars on the Water. And, uh, oh, there was this part like this. Anywho, I said that Albert played it, and Albert did play it, but also the part was being doubled by Hank DeVito and so it's panned hard right and hard left so Hank was kind enough to contact me and tell me that uh, that was uh, he and Albert and uh, Hank was uh, kind enough to add that he was using his Esquire which from the back photo of the album you can see him holding an Esquire it looks to be a 69 because it has the big uh, black uh, you know logo you know CBS logo that was only used really for about 69 or 70. And then of course there's no more Esquires for a long time. And said he used a, a Vox AC30 and they both played that part and they panned it hard right and hard left. So anyway, thought that was great. And so thank you to Hank. Uh, if you're not familiar with Hank DeVito, he was the original uh, steel player in Emmylou Harris's hot band. So that's him playing on all those, uh, the first five or six Emmylou records, you know, along with Albert Lee and James Burton and, all those cats and uh, he also uh, co-wrote uh, Juice Newton's uh, Playing with the Queen of Hearts and uh, Sweet Little Lisa you know there of course Dave Edmonds and Albert Lee and many others have recorded and uh, then a Hal Ketchum tune called uh, Small Town Saturday Night that was kind of a big hit in the in the early to mid 90s and uh, and then he's also a really acclaimed photographer and he's had uh, you know, kind of uh, gallery showings and such. And uh, probably most most famous of his photographs is the cover of Roseanne Cash's King's Record Shop album. And so that's actually a photo that he took, and then he took another photo of Roseanne and superimposed it on there. And that uh, album cover, uh, it won a Grammy. So there you have it. So thanks to Hank DeVito, and there's some, uh, some, some love for Hank. And uh, of course, I, I love all those albums. So... All right, but back on to our, uh, the task at hand, which is a guitar, Telecaster setup. I've been, y'all have been asking me to do this since January, and I've kind of been hesitant to do it, and the reason is, is, um, well, I don't really use any tools for setting up guitars. So, you know, a lot of guys, you know, will at least use some type of measuring device or, you know, calipers or feeler gauges and stuff like that. I don't use any of that stuff. And so part of me has just kind of felt, you know, kind of like a hack. And, uh, but this is just the way I've set up guitars. And I know, you know, professional, you know, techs and repairmen, you know, will completely maybe poo-poo, uh, you know, the way I've done things. But, you know, it's worked for me. It worked for Brad Paisley. Uh, you know, it's, it's worked uh, <laughs> for the other people I've worked on their guitars. Uh, basically I just kind of go by feel and, uh, and I think that part that works partially because, you know, because I am a guitar player and I do, you know, kind of play all over the, the neck. And so that's just what I've done. It's what I've always done. So I'm just going to go, uh, you know, step by step on how I would go about doing things. Uh, one last thing while you're thinking about it, if you've been enjoying the show and you haven't subscribed, please go down in the corner and do so. And if you've already subscribed, then I'd appreciate you going to AskZach.com. You can go to the store and you can pick up a, a nice mug or a t-shirt and you can support the show. Also have a tip jar information in the description. So that's what you want. All right. So how do I set up a guitar? First, I'm going to make a comment about frets. If you have frets that have divots in them and that are all torn up, well, then you need to look at you know, getting uh, getting a refret, or possibly if there's enough meat in the frets, you could probably get a fret dress. That's where they they level all the frets. Uh, maybe a partial refret, or sometimes it's actually cheaper just to buy another neck and put it on your telly. 
especially if you have uh, a more inexpensive instrument, it might be cheaper to sell it and buy another one, or you know even get a music craft neck. You know maybe even pay two or three hundred dollars because now refrets are in the four hundred dollar range, four to five hundred dollars now. So with that in mind, unless you have a buddy that does really good refrets, um, yeah, or you have a really expensive guitar, you know if you have an old if you have an old guitar or something, you know, a custom shop or something like that, then it's worth a refret. Okay, so let's say your frets are in good shape. The first thing I'm going to look at is the nut. Now, I like the nut really low, seriously low, okay? Because I like an easy playing guitar, and I don't play hard. I use light gauge strings, so these are Ernie Ball strings that are singles I put together this set. So this is a 10, a 13, a 15, 24, 32, 42. So this is kind of like the low end, you know, of a, of a 9 set. And then this is like the 10 and 13 is like a 10 set. And then you actually have a pretty light uh, G string. This is even lighter than, you know, because normally a 16 would be on a, on a 9 set. So this is what's comfortable for me. And this is what I like. Okay, and then I like the, the nut to be low. And to me, the best way to test, you know, a nut to see, you know, if it's, if it's set well for me is I use a capo. So I play the guitar open first. And if it's, like, tough to play, you know, I'll put a capo on like that. Now, if the guitar plays like a completely different instrument, the nut slots are too high. Okay, because you've just eliminated the nut. And so this is kind of an easy hack to see. Also, this will show you uh, if there are just certain strings that are too high. Because again, you'll, you'll be able to play it open and then you'll play it you know, with the capo on. And you'll be like, wait a second, now this string is so much easier to play or this is too low. And uh, yeah, so that's a really good way of eliminating the nut and, and finding out where your problems are. Because... If a nut's really too high, you'll put the capo on, and then all of a sudden it'll actually play too low. Because you, what you've done is you've probably tried to compensate for a too high nut by lowering the action too much. So once the nut's in the right place, you know, sometimes I find I can actually raise the action on this end. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's kind of the nut. I don't work on nuts. I don't like to. Um, you know, in, a, in an emergency situation, I'll do some filing or filling. Um, you know, filling could be anything from just getting a piece of paper. You know, I don't know if you've ever seen those old, uh, that old Albert Lee uh, Starlix video, but he talks about having a nut fetish. And he, and he talks about having some paper in the nut. And that's because the slot got too deep and he had to put some paper in there to keep the string from just rattling or, or probably even rattling against this uh, first fret. So that's a, an easy hack for uh, if you're out on the road and, and you find it, you know, you've got a slot that's too deep, you can just get some paper and you can stuff it in there and put the string on top of it and you can make it through the gig until you can uh, get back. While I've got the capo on, well, no, I'm going to take the capo off. Okay, the next thing we're going to deal with is relief in the neck. So that has to do, you know, with adjusting the truss rod. So to check for relief, relief is the amount... It, you know, it has to do with whether you have back bow or not, uh, it, or how straight the neck is. So to check for this, the way I do it is I use the string itself as a straight edge by pressing down on the first fret and the last fret. And then I'm looking at the seventh fret, and I'm looking at the space in between the bottom of the string and the top of the fret. And there should be very little space, just... You know, it shouldn't be touching because if it's touching, that's bad. That means you've got a, you've got a, a back bow and you need to, you need to straighten it. Uh, yeah, but you just want the tiniest bit of space. And again, I play light, so uh, you know I, I want it to, uh, you know, just have a little bit of space. If you have it where it's turned like this and you have a ton of space, you know, of course you need to, you need to tighten the rod. Uh, now on an old telly like this, you have to adjust the rod. Uh, via you know the end of the neck so my little hack for that is I put a capo on loosen all this all the the strings then loosen the four bolts move this just enough to get to the uh, you know the, the truss rod screw 
and uh, you know adjust it. And I don't do any more than a quarter of a turn. In fact, most of the time I like to do an eighth of a turn. That's if it's close already. Uh, but uh, yeah, that makes a big difference. You know, when you have too much relief, it just makes the guitar hard to play. If you know, if you've got that back bow, then you know it's just going to play terrible in here, and it's going to be all rattling and stuff. So that's that's that hack. Okay, so let's say frets are in good shape, nuts in good shape. Uh, you've got you've got the uh, uh, the neck straight now, you know, or just with a, a touch of relief. Well, you know, the next thing you want to look at is the action. So with this again, you know, I don't use you know tools for this. So basically, what I do is I I'm worried mainly about the low E and the high E, and so I get them to where they sound good, they play cleanly, and I can bend them. You know, and they're not rattling. And then from there, I will kind of follow the radius to a degree. And so I will, you know, kind of eyeball it. And then also I'll use, you know, a little radius gauge like this. And so this one has a bunch of, it has, you know, 12, seven and a quarter, nine and a half, 10 on here. And this came from, uh, there's a, a Dan Erlewin uh, book called, um, make your electric guitar play great. And I'll put a, a link in the, uh, in the description. And it's a great book that will can really, if you want a deep dive into setting up guitars, it will, you know, give you more info. And in the back of it, it has this, uh, Stuart McDonald little, uh, little, uh, you know, radius gauge. And you can, uh, you can make your own, or you can print these out online and, uh, and then you can, uh, you could make one out of cardboard or something like that. So this is, you know, good for, you know, you can, you know, you can look at things at the, at the nut and then you can also press it against the bridge and you can kind of see, and the way, you know, by just lightly touching it and then strumming the strings across, you'll be able to tell which ones are touching the radius gauge and which aren't. Now, probably at this end, you would probably want to use, you know, one of these type radius gauges and then kind of hold it up maybe with some tweezers or something and uh, and then you could strum across and so when I used this 7.25 one I found that um, the D and the G string on this are actually a little bit low but I don't mind that so uh, yeah so I, again I'm not gonna just follow the radius just because that's the way it is because I want the guitar to feel good to me so yeah, so I just kind of set it to where it, it feels good and it rings true and I can bend the strings, you know, all over the neck. I'm not getting rattle or maybe I'm just getting a slight amount of rattle, but nothing, anything that's going to, you know, stop time. And, uh, yeah, then intonation, of course, you know, you have to use a tuner for that. So I guess I do use a tool for that. Uh, you know, and you, you know, and I, you know, always use, uh, intonatable saddles. These are made by advanced plating here in Nashville and these are steel. And then of course, you know, you just have to move them back and forth. And when you're setting the intonation, do not use harmonics. Okay. So use open notes and fretted notes, preferably, you know, open and then at the 12th fret. And also I sometimes will check at other other frets also. And if you're going to err on one side or the other, because the guitar is not perfect, it seems like our ear can take sharpness rather than flatness. So if you're going to err on one side, like if it's going to start going one way or the other as you go up the fretboard, it's better to go sharp rather than flat. But again, you want to get it as close as possible. All right, so now you've got good frets. You've got, you know, the, the nuts in good shape. Uh, you've set the action. Uh, now, you know, we're ready to talk about the pickups. So... I use, you know, pretty much vintage style, either vintage pickups or vintage style pickups. I'm not into high output pickups, really. Um, that's just not what I like. I prefer lower output pickups. I like a cleaner sound. If you can't tell from, you know, I think I've probably hit an overdrive pedal or, or overdriven the amp maybe twice in uh, 54 episodes. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm, I'm going for a clean, fat sound. 
And you, you know, to me, I've, I haven't found a better way than with, you know, lower output pickups. So I don't like anything really hotter than 7.5, you know, really on, on neck or, or bridge. So, and sometimes, you know, I think maybe that adder pickup might be a little hotter than that. And I just kind of lower it down a lot. So this is my hack for setting pickup height. So what I do is I press the high E string at the last fret and then I raise this side of the pickup all the way to the string to where it's touching it and then I just lower it just a little bit to where it won't you know, hit it when you're playing. And that is kind of setting, you know, th that's kind of setting the yardstick of where we're starting from. Then everything's based on that. So next, I'm gonna set the base end of this pickup by matching the output. So I'm gonna hit this high E string and then I'm gonna hit the low E string and I'm gonna match the output. So that usually means I'm gonna to have to lower this side some. You know, and you know, usually you're gonna end up with a bit of an angle with it lower on the base end. And of course it depends on the pickup that you have. Uh, then once I get that even, then I'm gonna to go to the back. And again, I'm all gonna, it's gonna be based on this. So I'm gonna go from the neck pickup, hitting the high E string open and then I'm going to go to the back and I'm going to hit that and I want to match it in output. If anything, I'll actually make the neck where it's a touch hotter because the, the neck just doesn't cut through as much as the bridge. And uh, yeah, I find that like when you're in the heat of battle and you're soloing, and let's say you wanted to go from the bridge pickup to the neck pickup and the, you know, while you're, while you're soloing, most of the time, you, you need a little more output from the neck pickup to cut through. And so I'll either have them where the same or where the neck pickup is, is uh, just slightly hotter. And so, yeah, so then I've set the high side, you know, the, uh, the treble side of this pickup again to match that. Then I can just go to the back pickup and I can match this end to that end. Another thing that I find helpful, you know, besides just using my ear, is I like to have some kind of pedal that has like a, an input LED that comes on. And so I used to use an old Deluxe Memory Man because it had, you know, an input LED and it was really good for helping me set that. Another, uh, I use the Mirage compressor a lot. And one of the reasons I like it is because it helps me set pickup height and everything because I can kind of have a, a, not just using my ear, but also have kind of a visual of how hot the signal is. So, yeah. So that's that's the way I uh, I set the uh, the pickup height and uh, and and then at the end of the day, it's all about does it sound right? You know, does it feel good? Does it sound good? That's what matters. All right. So there are my little uh, you know hacks on on setting up a Telecaster. Uh, let's go for our little lesson part. Of, uh, of today's episode. We'll talk about the thing that I played at the beginning uh, of the show. Uh, and this is kind of a, uh, a uh, you know, a pick and fingers kind of exercise. You know, it's a... And let me just play the right hand and you get this. play that even slower. Again, this is just the right hand. Slower. Okay, and then you have basically going over this shape. And then you have this one, your D minor. shape I like a country boy Albert Lee thing and then you just move that down two frets that's kind of like it looks like a uh, an a minor seven with a with an e in the bass uh, though it's probably uh, 
probably it's really a one with the with the with the uh, the third in the bass, I guess. Really. And then just playing a G. So. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode, and I hope you have a great week. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm.